Hi, this is Lakshmi Kantiwari. Welcome back to your new lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how you can implement actually how you can detect a malaria parasite using convolutional neural network. So we'll be working on a set of images which will be having uh, images of uninfected uh, blood cells and uh, parasitized parasitized uh, blood cells. All right, those are infected with the malaria parasites and uh, these uh, data set is available here and the original paper link is here so it was published and then finally i'll be showing you how you can implement a convolutional neural network to achieve a 94 percent of the accuracy but with the better uh, uh, by adding few more layers and uh, making a little more changes uh, depends on the gpu computational power on your computer then you can definitely increase the accuracy and apart from that, then I finally I'll be showing you how you can plot a learning curve for your convolutional neural network. So this all will be in this lesson. So without wasting time, let's go ahead and start a step by step coding for each of these number of lines. All right. All right. Malaria is a life threatening disease caused by uh, parasites that are transmitted to people through the bites of an infected female anopheles mosquitoes. Alright, so it is uh, preventable and uh, curable. In 2017, there were an estimated, estimated uh, uh, 219 million cases of malaria in 87 countries were found. And with this map, you can see that the most uh, uh, infected countries due to the malaria and especially uh, South Asia uh, and uh, and the African countries are mostly infected with the malaria cases. And this happens because of the warm climate as well. In warm climates, mosquitoes are tend to, uh, you know, uh, 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 bring these uh, parasites one human to another. And the estimated number of the deaths because of this malaria happens every year more than 400,000 deaths. And this is actually a huge. And uh, this is spreads out because of the mosquitoes and carrying the malaria parasites. In 2018, a research paper was published named as Pre-trained Convolutional Neural Network as a Feature Extracts, Extractors Toward Improved Parasite Detection in Thin Blood Smear Images. Alright, you can get the link of this here. So, if you visit this at NIH here, at the NIH, you get here uh, uh, the, the complete the data set for the malaria on which we will be working in this lesson. And uh, this data set contains the images of uh, blood smears. That's mean uh, you see the images of those blood smears like this. So these are the images. Uh, uh, the un uninfected images are something like this. And uh, uh, those uh, images which are, I mean those blood uh, samples uh, those who had uh, malaria and their blood smears look like something like this so we are gonna apply machine learning techniques especially convolutional neural network to identify whether a person is infected with malaria or not and uh, you can download the data set from here itself otherwise if you can't download this from here then you can go ahead at the Kaggle and at the Kaggle you can also download this data set Apart from that, you can also go ahead at my GitHub repository, Malaria Classification using CNN. So I have uploaded, re-uploaded that data set here. And of course, I have acknowledged that from where I have uh, taken this data set. And uh, here if I show you these images. So these are the images for uninfected uh, blood cells. And let's go ahead and see uh, infected blood cells. So these are the images. Okay, so those who have a malaria parasites. So this look like this. So we are going to apply a machine learning techniques to identify whether this blood cell have malaria or uh, it is not infected. All right, so let's go ahead. We are going to work in a, in, in a Google Colab. And as usual, if you don't have uh, if you don't have watched my previous video, you can go ahead at my channel KGP Talky. There I have been making so many videos on machine learning, especially a TensorFlow 2.0 tutorial for a beginners. So this will be a 15th lecture in this lesson series. And you can go ahead and watch these series. And apart from that, we have uh, getting started with machine learning as well. 
so these lectures you can uh, go ahead and watch on my channel kgp talk all right let's come back to uh, google colab in the google colab you can create a new file from here new python notebook and then you can um, you can change your runtime settings you need to set here a tpu i have found that a tpu is much faster than a gpu and then once it is set then you need to install a tensorflow gpu so the currently tensorflow gpu 2.0 version is uh, i mean the beta version is released that's why we are installing this version otherwise you can install a latest version of a tensorflow gpu you can go ahead at this link and you can get the uh, the latest version of a tensorflow gpu all right so let's go ahead and install this for installation it might take a little time to complete its installation so every time whenever you start a new uh, the colab uh, notebook and uh, then you need to install these libraries so these libraries actually you know get installed into a local or a temporary file so when your your runtime machine starts restarts all those uh, you know the variables get lost so let's go ahead and wait for some time to complete its installation all right so tensorflow 2.0 gpu has been installed in this google colab notebook now let's go ahead and import a tensorflow as a tf and then a keras from tensorflow but we will not need that a tensorflow.keras a sequential layer and then flatten dense convolutional 2d max pool 2d and we also don't need a zero padding as well and then drop out since we will be working with the images we are also going to import image data generator and uh, we don't need this optimizer so let's go ahead and delete this and now let's go ahead and run this so once you run this you should get here 2.0 version all right and uh, with this let's go ahead and uh, import here a numpy all right so these are the some um, uh, the supporting libraries which we will be needing in fact we will be also needing uh, we'll be also needing matplotlib later in this lesson matplotlib dot pyplot hplt all right so after this we have uh, imported necessary libraries now we need to re uh, upload our data on a google colab and to do that you can either upload from here otherwise the best way to download this data directly so you can copy this link here and uh, and then you can write here git clone all right so write here git clone and and the github repository link let's go ahead and clone this repository in this uh, file so it will take a little time to complete this uh, uh, the repository import but in meantime it will complete its import all right so now you see if you refresh this file you see we have got malaria classification using cnn and inside this malaria data set we have the images now what i'm going to do i'm going to take the address of this path all right so let's copy this path and then i'm going to define for which i mean what will be the imported image width and the height that i'm going to define with image image width that i'm going to just read with 64 and img height so in this i'm going to read with 64 as well although if you have uh, uh, the higher version of a gpu and the computational power then you can also increase this image width 200 cross 100 for a better accuracy since this is educational lesson so i'm just going to import it into 64 into 64 image size all right so now let's go ahead and uh, and uh, and call a image data generator so here we have data gen is equal to sorry image uh, uh, we also need to actually buy image data generator all right so we have got image data generator now we need to rescale the pixels of uh, pixels of the photographs to in between 0 to 1 that's mean we can just pass here rescale is equal to 1 and then divided by 255.0 and apart from that i'm also going to use here a validation split in this so i'm going to use 20 percent of data for a validation all right so with this we have created here image data generator now we need to read the read training uh, set as well as a validation set 
that we can read with train data generator all right is equal to data gen dot flow from directory so we are going to use here flow from directory we will be reading all the um, images from a directory and uh, and the link of the directory we have already copied that so let's go ahead and paste it so inside this so there are two classes which it will be reading parasite parasite and uninfected all right perfect and after the directory we are going to also set here a target size for which a target size in which these images will be read and that we have already with the img width and height all right so after this target size i'm going to also define what will be a class mode so we have here class mode of a binary that means it is just uh, uh, the binary classification and then i'm also going to set here a batch size so the batch size is 16 that means 16 images will be uh, will be read at a single time and after this batch size then here we have a subset is equal to training all right perfect so let's go ahead and run this and uh, it says that it doesn't have uh, sorry it has e e expected actually the training but uh, we have not given any subset perhaps yes we have given a subset uh, actually it's wrong here uh, that should be training all right so with this we have got here a training subset that's the 80 percent of the data and uh, then let's go ahead and copy this and paste it here and then we are also going to make it for validation so here we are going to get those 20 percent validation data set and that we can get here all right so with this we have got our validation data set as well as a training data set so this is 80 percent of a data 22,000 images and here 5510 images belongs to validation data set and if you want to see the labels you can get the labels by calling hmm, uh, the train data generator and then dot labels so with this you will get the labels which besides uh, which is inside this train data generator and similarly you can get a label in a validation data generator as well so we have reached here in our uh, exciting state which is cnn model building as usual okay so we'll be making here model is equal to sequential so we have got here a sequential model now let's go ahead and add here a first layer of convolutional neural network there we have conv 2d and inside this convolutional neural network we need to first define how many filters i'm going to provide 16 filters and then uh, then it asks about kernel size i'm going to say that the filter size should be a three by three all right and uh, after that three by three filter size i'm going to also give here an input shape and uh, we need to define here an input shape and uh, this will be just defining the first layer of convolutional neural network and that input shape is actually img width and then here we have img height and then three that means it's a color image and then we also need to define here activation function as well so let's go ahead and define activation function a global activation which we generally use that's the relu rectifier linear unit and then we are going to add here a max pool all right so the model dot max pool 2d and then here a pool size which we are going to add that will be a 2 cross 2 all right so that would be a 2 cross 2 all right so this is max pool and after that i'm also going to add the another layer here so this will be just a two layer of the convolutional neural network 
so let's go ahead and add that layer as well Kanu 2D and in this I'm going to use a 32 filter now after this 32 filter I'm also going to use a 3 cross 3 filter size that's the kernel size and then after that we don't need to use here a input shape but we are going to use here a activation function so here the activation function which we are going to use that will be a relu activation function all right and after that i'm also going to use a max pool so let's go ahead and copy this and paste it here so here we have a two layer of the convolutional neural network now let's go ahead and convert this uh, uh, the multi-dimensional data into a vector that we can do with the flatten so we actually always do so every convolutional neural network have i mean uh, a model which have a convolutional neural network or a neural network have a flattened layer at the end so after this flattened layer we are going to add here a dense layer as well so that is a fully connected layer actually all right so this is a fully connected layer in which we are going to pass a 64 units of uh, uh, neuron and then the activation functions i'm going to use here a relu all right so after this then once we have this a tense layer then i'm also going to add here a dropout as well so i have not added any dropout yet but for a generalization i'm going to add here a dropout and there i'm going to drop a 50 percent of neuron randomly and then finally we have a final output layer where we can add a fully connected layer in fact a dense layer all right so here we have a dense layer but the number of units for this dense layer will be just one and since this is a binary classification then we will be using here a sigmoid activation function and apart from that i am also going to add a little more uh, at the dropout here so the model dot add and then drop out there i am going to use here a 20 percent of um, 20% of neurons will be dropped randomly and similarly here I am also going to use a dropout as well so we have here a dropout and then we have a 0.3% that's mean a 30% here alright so with this let's go ahead and build this model and uh, you can print the summary of this model which you can get here so here we have a summary of this model it has total 400 and 4000 uh, 406000 total parameters and uh, now we need to compile our model so for model compilation what i'm going to do model dot compile and inside this i'm going to pass here optimizer and that optimizer is adam and uh, that is stochastic gradient uh, descent optimizer and uh, then we have here a loss function and the loss function which we are going to use that we are going to use here binary cross entropy and then here we have a matrix and the matrix which we have here is accuracy all right so we have here a compile model and now we are going to train this model okay with the history is equal to model dot fit all right so but do remember here since we have got our data by calling image generator so we need to provide here fit generator all right so for a fit generator we need to pass our generator for a training data set so that is actually uh, uh, that is actually uh, the train data generator right so what is this yes so this is a train data generator and then we have validation data generator so here we have a train data generator and then how many steps it want per epoch steps per epoch we are going to provide here it will be equal to length of this train data generator and now the next one which we are going to provide that is actually the number of epochs for how many number of epochs we are going to train it is, we are going to train it just for five epochs 
and then we need to provide here a validation data all right so we can provide here a validation data which is equal to a validation data generator all right and after this we also need to provide here validation step and that is equal to the length of validation data generator all right so this is all let's go ahead and train this model it will take a little time to complete its training so finally we will get the results so let's go ahead and wait for some time all right so the training is done here and we have got around 94 percent of the accuracy and on the validation set and the similar accuracy on the testing set as well so with this we can also make sure that our model is neither overfitting and nor underfitting and 94 percent accuracy is not uh, the pretty much uh, good in case of uh, uh, the medical term but with this just a simple model since it takes a lot of the time and with this with these just a simple model we have actually got quite good accuracy but if you have a cpu which has a really large computational power then you can go ahead and add few more layers and uh, make some changes like adding dropouts and the normalizations batch normalizations etc to understand how um, how your performance is changing while we are while you are changing here the model parameters otherwise you can also use a pre-trained model as well like i have shown here a uh, pre-trained model like uh, 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 like VGG16 and uh, similar models you can use VGG16, VGG19 or ImageNet etc, LXNet to apply a transfer learning alright so these are the techniques where you can actually which you can use to improve the accuracy now let's go ahead and uh, see a learning curve for this model which we can see with history dot history all right so with this we have got accuracy loss all right so i have already written a code for that let's go ahead and copy this code and there i have i have been um, you know i uh, using the same code in my previous videos as well here in all of these videos let's go ahead and run this cell uh, basically what i'm doing here in these two uh, line of code i'm plotting here training accuracy and the validation accuracy and these two line of code is plotting here are uh, the training loss and validation loss and we are getting this from this dictionary history dot history and if you see here we have a history dot history so let's go ahead and call this plot learning curve and then once we do this we can pass here a history and then number of epochs we have trained it for now five number of epochs so with this you can see our model is neither underfitting nor overfitting so we have a kind of a perfect model but this is not quite accurate since the 94 percent of accuracy is not very good but you can make a changes in the model and you can check with uh, you know the other models how its accuracy is improving so and uh, let me also show you uh, this paper a pre-trained convolutional neural network so this is original paper you can also file you can also uh, 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 the follow this paper to implement as it is this paper but it takes uh, a lot of the gpu computational power so i don't have that much of the gpu computational power so i'm just uh, you know using a, uh, the google colab which doesn't offer that much of the power but if you have then definitely you can go ahead and you can reproduce this paper for your for your learning purpose and i am also going to give the link for this paper and uh, let's go ahead and provide that link here all right so this is all about in this lesson thank you so much for watching this video and please do not forget to like and subscribe this channel so that you can get updates directly into your inbox